Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. A, it was sunny, and then it went back to cloudy, and I'm okay with that. Better for filming. Look at the sky, though. Isn't it beautiful? Been a very, very rainy several days here since the last garden tour. I've had maybe a day of sunshine. The plants have enjoyed it. This is part two of the August garden tour, so if that doesn't make any sense, I'll link part one down below in the description and it'll be in the end card at the end of this video. We're gonna try and pick up where I left off, as if I can remember where I left off. I believe we were moving on to this half of the yard over there, right? Yes? I think so? There's still some things to talk about over on the other end. I did remember some plants that I had forgot to mention, but we can circle back and do some moving around. Here is where I left off the ginger canna, whatever, whatever we would call the space, right here. In the back, the great big red banana cannas are, have shockingly still been growing. Look at the flowers on them. It's sort of hard to tell, but they're above the bottom of that window. And from inside the house, that's, it's very tall. Very, very tall, but that's what they're supposed to do. It's why I like them, it's why I love them. It's the reason I plant them over here is nice, big, bold foliage with a lot of color. They have a reddish veining, and well, it's not a reddish veining, it is red veining with a reddish outline to the leaves. Green in the middle, as you can see. They remind me a lot of the Enset Moreliais, which is, I think I always draw that comparison here. That's why I like them, but they're hardy. They come back every year. I planted, I think this entire spot right here is just three rhizomes last summer. Threw a bag of mulch on them during the winter time. They all came back. Okay, okay, I'm gonna remember before we get 20 minutes into the video. Zone 6A, 6B, right on the line. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. If it's in a pot like this right here, it goes away to a greenhouse or it goes into the garage, which I convert to a grow space during the winter time. If it's in the ground, it gets cut down to the ground, mulched, and comes back next year, hopefully. Sometimes some of those things are experiments like this little gem right here is somewhat being hidden by the bikini teeny. That is a Pharaoh's mask colocasia. I would get in closer, but as I talked about last week, one of the reasons I had to divide the garden tour up into two different parts is because there's a ground wasp yellow jacket situation back here that has been not handled. The handling process has been started. I don't really know how to describe it. There aren't as many as there were, but I'm still like not trying to get in there and play around because there, there are a lot of them. I've been stung a few times, don't really feel like getting stung anymore, so we just have to settle for getting like about that close. It's about the best I can do. But that Pharaoh's mask right there in the middle, I planted that as an experiment. Those are from Brian's Botanicals. It's just a little thing, when I put it in the ground, it has its own drip head on it. I planted it with a lot of compost, which they really prefer. I have noticed with the Pharaoh's mask that they like things extremely rich. Maybe I can set the tripod in closer and just back myself away. I think that's as close as I'm going to try and get though. The uh, Pharaoh's mask, they have them listed as hardy for zone seven and uh, warmer. I, like I said, zone 6A, 6B where I am, so they will potentially come back. I don't know, this one's in the ground as an experiment. This entire corner over here is very warm and toasty. The sable miners in here, along with tons and tons and tons of gingers, these are all hidichiums. Majority of them are Hidichium Flaming Torches. There are some Elizabeth, which just got planted as barely anything last year. You can see them down there. Did that, this is what you want them to look like, but I'm just shocked that that tiny little thing, I planted it like this big last year, late in the year, and it survived and came back. So that's its, technically I'm gonna say its first year's growth down there on the ground. Hopefully next year those rhizomes will be bigger and more sturdy and perhaps less shaded because I'm going to have to thin these cannas out some is they are shading things quite a bit. There's also a Gardnerianum Hidichium that's down in there that did survive the winter time, but I'm, there are probably a couple things going on with that one. Okay, hopefully you can see it. I just like jumped in there, set the tripod down and bolted away from it. It's right behind the Pharaoh's mask. It's gonna be more towards the left of the screen. The Gardnerianum was a gift someone sent to me. Thanks, Sean, I appreciate it. An awesome Hidichium. They have a nice, big, beautiful yellow inflorescence on them. As far as Hidichiums are concerned, the butterfly gingers, this might be worth its own video at some point, but for now we'll just talk about it briefly. I've noticed here in zone six, all of the types that I have grown, I have only had success overwintering and then getting the plants to flower the following year if they are of the uh, Coxinianum. Coxinianum, I've never been able to say it. It's here on the screen. If they are that or of that cultivar, 
they've come back for me very reliably and then will flower. But the Gardneriannums I have tried before, never been able to get them to flower. The Coronoriums I have also tried, which is a great one. They have a big white flower on them that smells heavenly. But I've never been able to get them to flower. It's like they, uh, it takes them too long to wake up and they don't get enough growing season to get going and push out in fluorescence. The foliage is still nice. That Gardnerianum is still about three feet, which is small for a Gardnerianum. But I am thinking if we can get them through this winter, so I don't know why we couldn't got them through last winter, then hopefully with some more sunlight, be able to get some more growth out of those. And I may just dig them up and move them. And the only reason that they're even back here is because this is that warm corner. This is where marginally hardy plants grow. I'm hopeful that since this is a very warm corner and there have been plants growing over here that really shouldn't be growing here, that this is probably the best spot to try that Pharaoh's mask. It'll get cut back in the winter time and I will be putting a ton of mulch on top of it. There hasn't been a ton of growth out of it. I think the light that it's getting is about right. I haven't had any leaf scorch, even when things were absolutely dreadfully hot out here in July. But with the Pharaoh's mask, I've noticed personally, they seem to grow their best in water, especially just very nutrient dense water. So if you have a goldfish pond, excellent plant to put in there with them, or even a fish tank. Honestly, if you want to have a giant plant growing out the back of your fish tank, that'll keep the water nice and clean and it will probably flourish. In the ground, they don't seem to move as quickly, but they still look nice. I have another one that you'll be seeing here in just a moment as we move further down. As far as this one's concerned, I am happy with the growth I've gotten out of it, but it's just not quite what I would expect if it were in more of an aquatic or marginal environment. The Sable Miners or Scrub Paw Meadows, they have been doing very well over here. I think that the ones that are on this end are a little bit more tucked away and hidden by the gingers, and so are some of the ones in there. The gingers and the bikini teeny colocasias, they just sort of eaten this garden bed alive, which I'm okay with for right now anyways. You can see them, they're all over the place. When I'm ready to replant in this spot, then I'll be pulling a whole bunch of them up, but that doesn't seem to be a problem because they grow everywhere. It's an elven ear that will really take over, so only plant it in a spot where you want it to be filled in. Or I think that it would be good to, you could put it in a pot and cut the bottom out of the pot and then make sure probably I'd say a good three or four inches of the pot sticking up above the ground that'll help keep them from creeping around. That would help keep them contained. That might work. Anyways, long story short, eventually, hopefully sometime uh, between now and November, there will be a tree planted in here. I'm just waiting to see what the nurseries get in for their fall selection. I'm looking forward to getting something larger and substantial and evergreen over here. Because everything over here, except for this clump of bamboo that I don't even want right here, everything else dies down to the ground in the wintertime. Oh, and the sable miners, they, they're evergreen, so. Those are under in the winter, but it's just like, you know, this thing of bamboo and then the little scrub palms. It'd be nice to have something with more structure that stays up and looking nice during the winter months. The bamboo, like there aren't really, there's not much to say about that. It doesn't put out summer growth. So got to see it in the spring garden tours. It hasn't done anything since then. And that is a black bamboo. Here's something I'm very excited about. Can you see it? Do you see them in there? Probably not. Yeah, maybe now can move some leaves around look at them so many cute little pumpkins i don't know how many there are i've been trying not to count them picked one a few weeks ago the one that just went to being ripe a lot faster than the others and then it's been pushing out all kinds of new ones ever since this one uh, i can't remember the name there's a tag this is a tiny little white stick it's back there with the wasps i planted orangitas which y'all saw on the last garden tour, they were over there. And then what was the other one? What are you? Okay, I climbed back there, had a quick look at the tag. These over here are the Orangitas. So I don't, I don't know what the other ones are because their tag is gone. These are the ones I showed in the last garden tour that I thought were going to die. And then they came back and they're pushing out. Not a lot of light here for, it doesn't matter that I don't know what they, oh wait, there's the tag. We be little, that doesn't, you're not gonna be able to see that. We be little, that's what these are. Be little, I was excited about because it's supposed to be a much smaller vine. Well, so are the Orangitas. Both of them said four to six foot vines, and well, I don't know about that. I have to say this is definitely bigger than six feet here. So planting them in a spot where they're going to grow over the patio, not the best idea. I didn't, I guess I thought they would stay smaller, but it's all right. Orangita has more of that, what is it, what are they called? The little jacks or jack you know, the, the ones that look like these, like these, those. I don't remember what they're called, but really common, tiny little pumpkin, just a decorative one. That's what these are, but they're larger. And then the Weeby Little, it's just it's just a little it's a little chunk of a pumpkin. But I hope I get a couple of them because they're really cute. If not, no big deal. 
I am enjoying this. <laughs> I'm excited to pick the pumpkins. Partially for the pumpkins and also because this is... Well, that's not ideal. Forgot I let Turbo play with some biodegradable flower pot from the uh, gomfrinas that got planted up a couple weeks ago. And he, of course, decided to make that a pool toy. So there's the pumpkins. They're nice, very large. If My thing is if I'm gonna have vines this big, then I'd rather have something that produces a larger pumpkin, but it's fine. They seem to be very abundant. They're holding onto their fruit really, really well, which is very nice. So, you know, that can be an issue. Sometimes you'll plant a certain variety of pumpkin and they'll flower like crazy and they'll start off and they'll start to set the little swollen parts where it's going to turn into the fruit and then they'll rot off with erratic weather. Anyways, that's something I've noticed, but these have, they've kept moving. So there should be a good amount to pick from in here. I don't know if there'll be enough for the juice to be worth the squeeze of having the patio taken over. So I'm probably going to be picking these rather early. It's become a bit much. It's really not safe to not have a wide path right there. So I'll probably at least be cutting them back or pulling them around, doing something to get them moved out of the way. The bajus down here, you can see it not as large as the bajus over there. And it's usually the other way around. There was some fruiting in here last year. Some other plants died off and those got cut back. That's why it's empty in the middle and have smaller stuff coming out the sides. But it's fine. I don't mind the little bananas. In fact, I used to have the Orinocos, Dwarf Orinocos over here. And I loved them. They got about this height right here every single year. A little bit taller, like six feet or so. They weren't huge. And the leaves were more narrow and tighter together and they had a fun look to them. Those were a pretty hardy one. If you're in zone six, I highly suggest giving those a try. They're still, they're okay. They're doing their thing. They're growing. Blue dune grass, it's all right. We talked, I think, in the July garden tour about what happened in here with the delphiniums. They, well, not a long story. They cooked, it was too hot for them. They fried, so don't see those over there anymore, but maybe they'll come back next year. Who knows? This is, it's a, it's a lot to explain. Well, it doesn't have to be. There's a hive of the yellow jackets over here in this corner right by the gate, by the entrance. When you walk through it, you just swarm by yellow jackets. That's been fun. So I laid the furniture cart, the dolly down over here to help keep the dogs from going because the dogs like to stand at that gate when people come and go. You know, they're dogs. They want to see the people moving around, but it's not safe to be standing right. You get it. It's just there to keep the dogs away from the gate. Not permanent. There's a, a DE powder spread all over the place over there that just got blown around and a powder was placed uh, as a bait outside the entrance to the hole by the people. I don't know, I didn't, I haven't done it. It's something that just apparently takes a little while and then those won't be a problem anymore. I don't feel great about that because wasps are good for the environment, uh, so are bees, but they keep stinging me and that, that's, not, that's not a good spot for them. Not <laughs> right by where you have to walk through. I have a driveway full of plants right now. There are about 30 something plants sitting in the driveway that I need to get back here. And I think I'm probably going to have to take them all the way around the front and around the house, all the way through back here to get them into the backyard because it's not safe to be walking through here, at least not for very long. Like I've popped through once very, very quickly and uh, every other time I've tried, I've gotten stung. So I'm not gonna do that anymore. At least not for a while. The Pharaoh's masks over here, they're looking, I guess we should talk about what's our plants in underneath first, shouldn't we? The Alexander. Doing pretty well. Got a nice big inflorescence on there. Maybe if I just hold the tripod above my head and get a better look at what's going on there. Can we see it? I don't know. I can't see the camera. Well, it has a nice big inflorescence on it. It's all backlit. It's, a, it's been doing well. It did have a rough start to things. This is that, that moment I had where I was like, I'm strong enough to pick this up if I were to lay it down on the side so I could prune it, which I was. It just, it, it, the palm tree didn't really appreciate being tossed and turned all over the place. Oh, someone's got the zoomies. And then this spot doesn't drain well. So, well, it actually it drains very well. It drains so well to the point where all of the moisture from everything that's over here drains down like a well around the root ball of this palm tree. It took me a little bit to get the knack of how much water this palm tree wanted. I had it up on drip and I ended up actually switching the drip off. It seemed like there was enough water coming up from the ground to keep the palm tree moving. I don't want to risk riding it out, even though the Alexander palms <laughs> enjoy a lot of moisture. So the dog keeps dropping toys at my feet. It was to a point where this is basically sitting in a pool. So that's why I dialed back on the watering. And it seems to be appreciating that it's growing more now than it was just a month or two ago. Everything it was underplanted with is doing just fine. Got the lemon coral sedums down there. Heliconias, they are finally, finally starting to go into flower. This was a rough year for heliconias out here. This is the... Uh, Petra, similar to Andromeda, but it's supposed to have a more thick inflorescence on it. The weather we had this year, we had a very cool start to the spring. And then June, we had some warmer summer type weather. 
And then July was just unbelievably hot and dry, which isn't normal for our area. Hot is normal. It's usually hot and humid, but not like over triple digits for over a week with no rain. So basically the plants, went, at least the tropical plants, went from not having enough warmth to keep them moving and growing very, very quickly. Like they were basically just sitting around. And then it got really, really hot to the point where they were just sitting around because it was too hot. Which I talked about in the last garden tour about how usually July is like the peak of the garden tour. But I figured August would be that this year. And it is. August things are really at their fullest and looking fantastic. I know it's September now, so August and September are going to be blending together. And how about the Pharaoh's masks? They just looking fantastic. So this is their second year in this container. It's a more mature clump that's in here. And they're just, they're doing their thing. Like looking all weird and virally. I have a light down here. It's not gonna be able to see anything from it because it's daytime, but at night it looks really cool if the light comes up underneath those. This size is that fun sort of alien look that those already have to them. In the back, those are the Enset Morelias and aren't they looking good? Back up some more so you can get a better idea of the height. Those are easily eight to 10 foot. They could have probably even gotten bigger this year. Turned out the spot wasn't getting quite as much sun as I thought it would, but because, well, the palm tree actually shaded things <laughs> more than I thought it would. They're still looking good though. They're more stretched. So the Ensets, if you get them into full sun, they'll have a more fat, thick pseudo stem on them, trunk, if that's what you'd prefer to call it and uh, then those really big large leaves. And these are more elongated all the way through because of that change in light, but they're still nice and sturdy. Plants are healthy and looking stable. I had a giant elephant in here. You can see I had to go through and cut the foliage out because it was making it too hard to get in to handle that wasp nest that was in the ground, which is fun. They grow so fast, I'm not concerned about that. It's just like an elf near a bulb I had picked up from Sam's Club, I think, during the winter time. The can of shoot guard in the back, looking great. They always have some sun scorch on them. That's totally normal. It's just kind of what they do. It's best to put those in a part sun location. I am looking forward to seeing what these do next year. I'll be storing those inside, dormant inside next winter. Oh, and the, I've started to move on, I forgot. Here's all the sun and patience, the variegated salmon that got planted in here. They're doing well. I actually really like how that turned out because even though they're not flowering super heavily, more towards where there's more shade back here, the variegation still lights the area up and makes it look nice. This spot has a really dramatic slope to it that I think looks sloppy and I don't really care for it. I evened it out a good amount this spring, but having those sun and patience in there helped hide that slope and made things look more seamless like they go together. That is a red cotton right there. Just a fun annual. Not much to say about it other than it's cool. It's a fun plant. That's it. Just, just a fun plant to have around. And then the impatiens. Look at them. Aren't they looking fantastic? There's been so much growth out of these over the last several weeks. Just a full-on rainbow of effortless color over here. And I have this spot backfilled or backplanted, not backfilled with some caladiums. It's just an assorted bag of caladium bulbs. Didn't plant this spot up as heavily with the impatience as normal, which I know I talked about in the last garden tour. So next year I'll make sure to double up to get that color to come through more quickly. Won't have to wait as long. The impatience did what I would expect them to do. They all went to the ground with a handful of compost. I think I used cotton burr compost when I planted these and just a little bit of slow release because they're heavy feeders. So it's just a get them up and get them moving. I wouldn't say that it made a, a huge difference. They do seem more green, perhaps. I don't, I don't know. I mean, they look like impatience. They are to that size where the flower capacity on them is starting to lull out. And this is right around when I would go through and cut them back by about 50%, let them fill back out. But I don't think I'm going to bother because there's only like a month left of growing. So if I give them a cut back, they're not going to rebound and look nice again until we start to basically, right when we have frost, it's gonna kill them back. So I'm just go ahead and enjoy them. They'll get a little bit spindly and I'm fine with that. As long as they have their color on them, that's cool. What I'm really surprised with over here, more so than the impatience, like I said, the impatience are what I expect them to do. The caladiums, look at how huge these are. They got absolutely massive back here. Like this one right here is probably over 30 inches tall. So this must be a sweet spot with the sunlight to get them to push up and grow behind everything. Cause there are some other spots that you'll see later in the video that are behind me where the caladium stayed nice and stout and they ended up shading out the impatience that I planted in front of them. But right here, they've worked perfectly. So I'm gonna remember that for next year. I suppose it might be ideal to pick one color 
but planting them as an assortment really worked out fine. It's just sheer coincidence that it went with the red and green to the white and green to a red and green to white and green and so forth, because there was no way to tell what they were. They were just bulbs. So that that just worked out really, really well. And they're looking nice. What are you doing, Turbo? Hey, get out of there. Yeah, he's the reason they're smaller right here. He did a belly flop in there back in July. Don't know why. Probably trying to get a ball in the back. The zingibers. Are they just ugh, beautiful plants. Alternating all the way through, it's Zingiber, Myoga, Silver Arrow, White Feather, Dancing Crane, Silver Arrow, White Feather, Tins, so forth. All the way through. White Feather has much heavier variegation on them. Not quite as much as I was expecting, though. I've grown them before, and they're usually more variegated than this, but that could just be the way the sun has shifted for the time of year. You can see the lower growth has more variegation on it than the newer growth. So the newer growth being out later in the season when the sun has started to shift away and the spot's not getting the same sun. So that's probably what that's about. And it can also be a maturity thing. Like the silver arrow that's right next to it, there's, there's no variegation on it. Or very little, I should say. You have to look hard to try and find it. These are all from Plant Delights and they say in the description that you don't usually see the variegation on the silver arrow. I believe they said for about three to four years. Something like that. So hopefully next year there will be more coming out of those. I'm just happy they're alive. We've talked about that before. I didn't think those were going to survive the winter because they got planted so late. And here's everything they did. Looking nice. This is what I mentioned in the last garden tour about how with the gingers, the hedichiums, I just like the shape of how they grow over. Like they come out. How they come out at like a, I don't know, I'd say like a 70 degree angle over everything. So imagine in a few years these will be a little bit bigger and they'll come out just above everything that's over here. Excellent plants, fully hardy here. I did mulch them heavily and I'll probably do the same because why not preserve as much of the plant as you can just get better growth out of them the following year. Hardy begonia down here. Yeah, I can't remember, uh, who, which one is this? Pink teardrops, I believe. So this got planted up last year also and I planted it up there. Turns out they do, they spread very well from underground. So I'm going to have to dig up this portion. I'll probably actually lift the entire thing next year and move it because this spot's not going to work. And that's because they are fully blocking my uh, time traveler hosta that's down here, which is a very special plant that I don't, I don't want it to get choked out. And the time traveler's doing well. Again, not a plant that you want to have hidden away. Want to make sure I can see it and be able to check on it and take care of it. I did, that's, that's not going to work, but I love hardy begonias. Very happy with the growth on these. They're a little bit shorter than I would expect. Uh, so that's another reason I should probably be moving them. This variety should get 24 inches tall. And this is uh, maybe 18. But again, it's only their second year. I guess technically we could call this the first year, even for the gingers, because they got planted so late the year before, they didn't have time to establish themselves or do anything. So maybe we'll call this year one. That's, that's not bad at all, right? This is a good amount of growth. Excellent perennial begonia. Really, really heavy sets of flowers on them. Look at all those little dangling pink lovely petals that are hanging down from those stems. Really nice airy texture and fun, big, bold, tropical-ish foliage. Highly, highly, highly recommend planting hardy begonias if you can. There are plenty that are hardy into zones six, and I think there are a few that are even good into zone five. This might be one of them. Also, if I've gotten the names wrong on anything, always check the description out because I like to go through and make my corrections to anything I forget in the video or mess up in the video. That'll be in there, but I'm pretty sure this is pink teardrops right here. The Yucca Rostrata, it's doing okay. I'm gonna go ahead and move this to more sunlight here in a day or two. I need to clear out a spot for it. I almost lost this one to Crown Rot last winter. It was getting watered way too heavily before the new heater got installed. It was in a spot where water was splashing and I didn't realize it, so I'm glad that I got it through that, but still I would like for it to push out some stronger growth before we start moving into winter. Want to have nice, sturdy, stable plants. Well, I guess always want to have nice, sturdy, stable plants, but especially if they're trying to recover from something. That's all the new growth that's come out of it, and it's looking pretty good. Overall, it's been a fairly sturdy plant other than some little things that I've done wrong, but outside of that, been an Awesome yucca, a fun one to grow. Pseudoranthemum over here, looking nice. This was planted underneath the Adenidia palm last year, and then I dug it up and I put a bunch of cuttings in a pot and did a video on that, and here's where the mother plant is, and then some of the cuttings are down there. Some of the lower growth are from the cuttings. You can see it's much more of a red tone than what I had with this last year, but last year it was getting a lot more white. Oh, this is the black varnish. So it has a very, very, very dark reddish color to it that almost looks black. It's like black with a hint of red. So, oh. Looks like a Merlot. Excuse you. What did you do? Where did you get that? 
just came ripping right through there with half a tree in his mouth. So I have some orchids that are sitting over here because I just couldn't find a safe spot to put them with Turbo and his cousin Louie when they come out here and tornado around. And they're doing well. It's just my Oilea types that are over here. Their pseudobulbs are really swelling up. They get a pretty good amount of morning light over here. And I've actually, this is some of the best growth I've ever gotten out of them. Unfortunately, it's when they're just sitting on the ground where I can't see them, but they're safe. Nobody's been messing with them in this spot, so at least there's that. I have a very large variegated aloe over here that I need to repot because it keeps on tipping over. See it? I also have some bromeliads in that pot and a uh, justicia bubblegum is what that is. It's in that gorgeous Talavera pot, and it was standing up, but I guess everything finally got so big that it just couldn't take it anymore. Do you see this? Who remembers this? It's the dwarf tree fern. This is the silver lady fern. I got a few of these from Hertz in a plant hall last winter, and, well, here's one of them, and here's how it's been doing. Some of the older foliage just started to bronze out on it, but it's pushing out new growth. You can see where I need to come in and do some pruning. But this is also a fairly good spot for it. Again, unfortunately, it's where you can't really see it. To find some better spots to put plants that are small in the garden where I don't have to worry about them getting knocked over by the dogs. And here's one of the others. I had multiples. These are, there's two of them. So you need to give that one a big prune too. It's got lots of dead stuff down below, but lots of new growth coming out the top. Pothos cuttings down there that were in a video where I was talking about propagating plants that right next to a, a dog toy that Turbo rips the skin off of. That is a Manjula pothos. There's a rabbit sweet fern hanging from the back of this chase lounge. Had that fern for what feels like forever. It's been a sturdy one. Bromeliads, Neorigelia fireballs hanging up over here. That clump is getting old. I need to cut it up and divide it because it's really died out in the middle. But it's just, it's so large and mature. It's hard for me to bring myself to do it, but I know the plant would look a lot better and have more longevity if I were to get around to doing that. The laurel hedge. I mean, nothing's changed with it. You know, they did their spring growth thing and now they're just, they're green, but I love them. They're nice, very lush, very happy. Or they make me very happy, right, Turbo? It was eyeball in this garden bed, like he was about to jump right into it. So this is another spot right here that got plants up in the springtime as an experiment. I've only ever had the pedicits, which are the large leaved plants in the back in this area. I pulled all the ones up there in the front and threw impatience in there. I wanted to see how they would do. I also threw <laughs> caladiums in the back just like I do with that spot that I showed you before, but you can see that didn't work out right here. So I'd say right around mid-July, this area is much, much, much more heavily shaded than I had thought it was. I don't spend a lot of time down here, so I didn't really realize that it was this dark. Regardless, the impatience still doing their thing. They also got planted up with a pretty hefty amount of compost around those roots and some slow release to help keep them moving. And uh, I talked about in the last video, but forgot to talk about so far in this one. I have been fertilizing about every other day out here with a quarter strength fertilizer. Pretty much any time I water right now, I'm using quarter strength all purpose fertilizer. You just go ahead, you just run right through there. Go ahead. And that, what you just saw, is another reason that this spot's looking a little bit rough, but it's mostly just right through his little game trail right there. I can see I have some stuff I need to prune out of that oral hedge. Guys, I think everything over here is doing very well. Lots of color, good amount of growth considering the sunlight, and haven't really had many issues with rot or bugs or anything of the sorts. There were some snails and slugs that pretty much resolved itself back in July when everything in St. Louis turned into a bone dry oven. It took care of a lot of the slugs and the snails. Ficus back here that I need to repot and move into more sunlight. I think this has reached a height now where I would be fine with going ahead and giving this a cut and letting that start to branch out. That's a good, it's in a pot, so it's hard to say. I'd say it's probably four and a half, maybe five feet, five feet, five feet of stem on there, trunk. So that would be a good spot to go ahead and give that a whack, probably more around right here. Let that start trunking out. So I'm gonna need to move that to my little repot corner so I can remember to get that done. Really sturdy ficus, this altissima right here. And you can tell it needs more light because there's barely any variegation showing through. The growth isn't horribly stretched out from the top though. Like the apex still has the leaves fairly close together. It's stretched out down lower, but up top, not so much. So uh, maybe I don't, I don't know. I'm, it needs a repot. I'm going to repot it. Sorry. Arguing with myself in a garden tour. This is the Maxillaria tenufolia coconut orchid. One of my favorites. It's a really common orchid, but it just has a fun growth to it. All those fun little swollen pseudobulbs down below with the grassy texture up above them. They have really fun 
flowers in the late winter, early spring that smell very, very nice. It's just a, just a nice, lush, very, very easy plant. If you're looking for a simple house plant that will flower for you, this is it. Maxillaria tenufolia, non-toxic. The cats will chew on it, so put it someplace where they can't get to it, but it is, that's a fun one. Yeah, don't be afraid of growing orchids. There are plenty of varieties out there that are not super hard to grow. But over here, this has become kind of, oh, what happened to you? Oh, we'll get there. This has become where a lot of my aeroids and things have ended up that I didn't either have a spot for or they needed some sort of treatment, so I didn't want them in full sun. I wanted to make sure that they weren't going to go through too much stress during a time of repot, something like that. Or they just needed a spot where they would only get filtered morning light, which is over here. And that's the reason most of them are over here. Like the parwar palm has the begonias down below. The beautiful spotted foliage. Aren't they beautiful? Love these begonias. Gorgeous begonias. The name escapes my mind. It's a reddish foliage with really, really intense reddish pink dots on it. Just remembering another reason I never do the garden tour plus houseplant tour at the same time. It's too much for my brain. Bouncing back and forth between the perennials and then the houseplants, it's a lot to remember. There's so much to remember. Prince of Orange Philodendron. It's, it's, there it is. Still looking beautiful. I've had this one for years. Sturdy plant. And most of the plants I have are fairly sturdy. I don't hold on to the ones that are a pain in the butt to grow. If they're too difficult to grow, I don't want them. On that note, have a Monstera over here that is just loving life. Look at that foliage. Done lots and lots of growing. I wasn't certain how it was going to do this year because the spot that I used to keep it in was getting more light. My thinking was that this might be too shaded for it, but I'm actually getting better, more appropriate growth out of it. Last year, the growth was really stretched out and lanky and really obnoxious to deal with, whereas it's more full. It's not putting out as many long stringy runners. They're staying close. You get it. The plant's looking healthier and it's been flowering off and on since, what, February probably? At almost all times, there's a flower on this, which is nice. Means the plant's nice and healthy. I have a, <laughs> an elastica back there that I just, I, it was up there and before the garden tour, I set it right here and it was upright so we could see it and then it got knocked up. It doesn't matter. It needs a repot. There it is. Dracaena marginata colorama. That one got a repot, which is why it's over here in the shade. This is a hybrid plant that I've never talked about before, and I don't know if I'm ready to yet. I'd like for it to get bigger, so we'll hold off on that. We'll just call it an elephant ear for now. Well, it is an elephant ear. It's just it's a kind of unique one that there's a lot of story behind it. We'll get to that in a different video. I have the Okinawa silver alocasias down below, which reminds me, I forgot to talk about the ones in the other video. So will be circling back to those to see the larger, more mature plant that those offsets came from. This is a lickety split, philod not philodendron, thematophyllum bipinatophyllum. It also just got a repot, so that's why it's over here in the shade. It was in a little uh, 10 inch faux marble container for a few years. It, that was, not big enough though. It is already pushing out newer growth. It's nice and green. It seems to be enjoying the fresh soil. Dragon's wing begonia, it's just an annual. It's just an extra. The plants I picked up to do some work with this year, it's just hanging out over there. Have the trio stars right here and on Sidium Sherry Baby that I just moved to the front because it wasn't getting enough light. And something was chewing on it, so I had to get it out of the gravel. And over here, um, if I had to guess, I would say a dog jumped in here. And, just just knocked everything over. So I'm gonna do some cleaning up real quick. Yeah, that was weird. Something knocked that over. So this is the Sabu Blue, Epipernum Panatum, Sabu Blue, Pothos, that was in bad need of a taller support. So I had a taller support and I put it on, I don't know, it was either too much weight and pulled it down or I'm guessing a dog toy got thrown over here sometime over the weekend and and someone probably jumped in there and knocked some things over. I was gone most of the weekend. I haven't been home much the last like three or four days period, so that would be my guess as to what happened there. But I have the support that fits right in there. I will have to move that up to a larger, heavier pot so that that doesn't happen again. The plant itself is doing well though. Look at this beautiful bluish, silvery leaves that it has on them. No fenestrations on them just yet. There are, well, it's starting to. There are some spots where there are tiny little holes starting to show through, but you really can't see it. That's probably bug damage. They're in there somewhere. There's a spot. You just have to take my word for it. I'm guessing that around this time next year, should that start climbing on something else, it should have some much 
larger leaves on it. It's been a very easy and fun plant. And then thyrum down here, one I've had for years, it's flowering, loving life. That one just seems to keep going whether it's in part sun or like total dark shade, which isn't, that's not recommended. That's just the way things are right now because of the time of year. Parlor palm, just hanging out over here. Firewar Palmen, slow grower, not a ton to say with that one. I have my Gigantium Philodent, which has randomly started shooting out tons and tons of new growth. I talked about how I need to get this one repotted a while ago, so that's at the top of pretty much everything in this corner is over here for a repot. Same thing with all the pothos that are down here. They're just being pothos. These are, what are they? There is a Manjula right here, one of my favorites. Love the Manjula, and then there's a, a Snow Queen or whatever, you know, the, the white white variegation, that one. And then there is a Jacenia over there in the corner. And the back here was the other spot I was talking about earlier when I was talking about the impatience and the Caladiums, how there was an area where the Caladiums just overgrew the impatience. That was right here. So they stayed smaller, more bushy. And this is more what I expect from Caladiums is this right here, this spot and a spot that's over here, right behind all those plants. That was all planted up just as an experiment to kind of get an idea of the light. I've never grown anything in the dirt up there before, not anything down in the soil. And I want to do some landscaping with this area next year. So that was just throwing some cheap stuff up there to see what they would do. And I, I have a decent idea of how things are going to work up here. There's also a hardy begonia up here so that's to give me a test for what things are going to be like next year. Isn't it beautiful? I can't remember its name. I'm sorry. I'm not usually this bad at remembering the names of the things during the videos, but I also don't usually try and remember or remember to talk about this many of the plants in one video. But I will either put it up here on the screen if I can find it, or it'll be down in the description of the video if I can't find it. Over here, the pool planters. Oh, they're looking nice. I love how these came out. These got potted up in a video not long ago at all, just about a week ago from today, I believe. Have a creeping Jenny coming over the front with Alpinia Zarembut planted with the intention of that coming over this way. Probably won't do much this year, but next year should be fine. And then a Cordon Frodocasa that I'm saying is the Red Sister because that's what it looks like, but I don't know for sure. In this container, I popped a Croton in here in place of a Curcuma ginger that I had in here just because I want to see what it would look like. And I don't know if I'm crazy about it. You'll see the, over here on this side where instead of a, a cro instead of a croton, there's a ginger coming over. I kind of like the green, surprisingly. I feel like the croton is maybe just sort of washes out. That's probably what I should say. It washes out with the yellow of the Zaremba and the spot isn't going to get enough light to get the intense colors out of this croton. It's going to be mostly this yellow and green that just it feels kind of redundant, right? So I think having the solid green right there would look better. And the crotons I'm going to use in some fall containers I'm doing for someone else. Maybe you'll see them on the channel. I'm not sure. Sun and patience. Taking a break from flowering, but still looking good. Red button gingers over here in the corner. Also looking good. Got a ton to say about them. Have them both planted up on each side. There's the other one of those Miami planters. You can see them. This area over here, more caladiums and impatience that were planted in place as more of an experiment. I also have some hydrangeas in the back that you can't even see. It'll be better look at those in the fall. And then an elephant ear that I dug up from back where the Alexander palm is, I tossed over here again, because I want to see what we're doing. The spot's getting a lot more light than I thought it did. I'd been assuming that the angle of the sun, the trees were filtering things more than they were, so that's good to know. You get some more light-loving plants into that spot next year. Oh, uh, and the pool planters. How did I forget to talk about those when we were over there? They're looking nice, aren't they? Right through the dolphins. Should probably go down there when I get a better look at them. This one is crooked. I keep staking it, and it just keeps weighing itself down. Have the sweet potato vines in here with the orange sun impatience, sweet petunia vista jazzberries and Tropical Rose Sun Impatience in these as well. They're both planted up the same underneath the Strawberry Vanilla Hydrangea Paniculatus, which is an older variety of paniculata. You can tell from the weeping habit. They don't have very sturdy stems. This is just what they do. The only thing I don't like about them and like about them at the same time, they have huge, gigantic flower heads on them though. And look at those. Absolutely 
massive. They start off white, which is more noticeable on this other one that was later to get going from this one. So you can see some of the white on there. And then they get a greenish hue and then they get this pink, kind of a glowy pinkish green on them. They also really, really fry up in the sun when it's like triple digits and dry outside and surrounded by pavement. So there's some crispiness in here, but they survived. I'm just happy about that because this is probably the most intense spot in the entire yard right here for the sun. I wasn't sure how that would go with the paniculatas, even though they like the heat and everything. They're still in a pot surrounded by a hot surface. Did okay. It didn't do okay. I think it did great considering it's their first year in these containers. Lots of growth out of them. Very fun, very weepy and pretty. I like the underplanting. I think the sweet potato vine did do what a sweet potato vine does. And I think it's just a bit much, but from far away, I really like how it looks up close. I'm like, ugh, I don't know. It's really hiding the containers. They're in really pretty containers. So you can't even see them, but I don't know. I go back and forth. I like it and I could go without it at the same time. At this point, see how much shade there is under here from this hydrangea from all the weepiness of it. It's like there's an umbrella above the plant so the flowering has slowed down on the impatience and on the super tunias that are over here too or the vista vista jazzberries uh, i'm pretty sure we already talked about that the orange sun impatience didn't do a lot over here in this spot they didn't do much at all they did better on the other side talked about that last week i think didn't we pretty sure in the last garden tour oranges on this side though looking pretty good kind of thirsty right now not surprised by that. I turned my sprinklers off because I, we had so much rain. I didn't think they needed to be on, but I was wrong. This one could use some water. So I'll get those turned on, give that a water. The oranges on this end probably did better than any of the others, which is surprising because this container gets the least amount of sun and it's a sun impatient. Well, no, they didn't do better than all of the others. The ones down there right here, those are doing fairly well. Lots of orange on those. And I think that's everything for this half of the patio, right? Yes, I think so. No, oh, Lespedeza, Lespedeza Thumbergii. There it is, putting on its late summer fall show that I just love about this plant. Really long weeping habit comes over the wall here, covered in pink flowers. There's normally, well, there's a bee. Kerbo scared to be off of it. Lots of bees and butterflies and hummingbirds over here. I have been staking this up because it takes over, it hangs down too far into the patio but I think the stake looks like it broke. So we need to do something about that. And now I think that's everything on this end. Green giant arborvitae, think we talked about that. Have a Japanese maple bonsai needle palm back here that I don't ever talk about, but there it is. It's a nice looking needle palm, very old, had it for a long time. I'm thinking now it's just time to catch up on the house plants I forgot to talk about in the last video and one other section with tropicals. The one over here by the house with the Robolini palm. Isn't that cute? No, not really. This is a pot full of Elochesia macleriza variegatas. I had a large one that started to rot out this spring with the cool weather and all the rain we were having and it just didn't do great so I cut its stem up and threw it into a fresh mix and it's been shooting up babies left and right. Not a total loss, have a whole bunch of new babies to get going. They've finally taken root. I did lose one of the offshoots that I put into the container down there. Don't know why I started focusing up there. We're talking about what's down there, but the rest of them are doing really well. So had a good success rate with the transplanting. Over here, Snow Princess Lobularia. When I showed this in the last garden tour, it didn't have any flowers on it, and I said it was just in between flowering, so it had a cutback. So here, there it is. There's some flowers. Carmesita heliconia. Not doing much, but it's come very far. Plant has been through it, and I'll talk about that more in the future when it starts to put on some more growth and do some more flowering. This is the mother plant of those Okinawa silvers that were down at the other end had this one for many 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 years and it has some gorgeous leaves on it look at that one isn't that just beautiful you'd be able to tell if it were in focus yeah gorgeous leaves fun thing about the variegated plants is you just never know what each leaf is going to look like when it comes out i have had some of the divisions i've taken from this plant revert so i keep a close eye on it I don't have this up on drip, it's an alocasia, so it just gets whatever water splashes over from the sprayers that are around it. And it's been overall a very nice sturdy plant that has just put out tons and tons and tons of growth this year. I'm thinking I might be able to go ahead and, oh, 
That's a nice one. Look at you. Beautiful leaf on that one. I, what was I about to say? I don't remember, I got distracted by really pretty things. I think it's time to give this one a division, but I'm going to wait because this is not the time for that. It's the wrong time of year. And it's done fine like this for many, many years, so I don't think it's, it's not like dying or anything of that sort. But when I start to see lots and lots of little stuff coming up from the bottom, it's like the plant's starting to scream at me that it's time to get moved into something larger where it can spread its roots out. And that's starting to be what's going on over here. I can go in there with a nice clean knife and cut a lot of those babies out and pot those over into new containers and get them going real easily. So that's what I will probably do this winter. Fatsia japonica, I haven't talked about this one in months. This is a plant that gets much more attention in the fall and winter and early spring because it, that's the time of year when it's outside and everything else is inside. That's doing well. Not much to say, just a sturdy plant, a super vigorous grower because I don't have it in a really large pot. If I were to, it's in a, I think a 10 inch container right now. If I were to bump this up into a 15 gallon pot, it would just grow like crazy. It needs more root space. So that's another thing to get on top of, but it's still healthy and it's doing fine. And then mother and daughter Croton over here. And a fun one, the little, little pieces it puts off that you can't see. It's a nice one. Had it for a long time. Not a tend to say about it. Just a fun Croton, silver dragon, alocasia back there. And then some divisions and other things that I'm working on repotting over here. Um, windmill palm. That's, there's the windmill palm. Has some damage from some cold you can see in there, but it has pushed out lots of new growth since then. Overall been a pretty big, happy, healthy plant. Okay, we talked about this one in the last video, but I feel like it didn't get enough attention. The variegated sea hibiscus. Come on, let's look at that. What a glorious plant. Love the foliage on there. Super sturdy, fun, easy to grow plant. I would grow this over any ficus in the house any day. This thing was so easy to overwinter. Has the vigor where you can prune it and do some training on it. It's overall a fun plant. This leaf in the last tour, which was just a few days ago, it was just a little thing that was curled down there and I said it was going to open up into a nice big beautiful leaf. And in the afternoon has more of a bluish metallic sheen to it. This is an electric blue gecko, Colocasia. You can sort of see that beautiful blue sheen to the foliage, kind of. Like a certain time of day, you have to find the right angle, but there is a very nice metallic-y blue sheen to it. You can see it a little bit more on this, yeah, actually I'm not seeing it much right now. Maybe when I have it on the computer screen, it'll be more visible. I can't really tell through this little viewfinder. In person, I see it and it looks really cool. Hibiscus, none of them were in bloom last week. And one did open up and had a nice big beautiful flower on it, seminal pinks. They just shot some nice looking flowers out. They sh are going to put on a big show here very soon. So there are buds all over this plant. So there's gonna be a lot of pink over in this corner. And the orange one, it has buds on it, so I don't want to do this, but I really need to give this a heavy prune to encourage it to branch out. The orange one was one of those hibiscus braids that has multiple different color hibiscus in it, and I didn't want the other colors. I don't remember, it was like the other color was red and maybe yellow was the other one. I'm not positive, but I just wanted the orange. It was a beautiful orange flower, so I went and I cut the rest of the stems out so I could have just the orange, but that only left it with three big maybe four growth points on it. So if I were to come in here and cut all those in half, that would get it to fill back out. And I, like I said, I don't want to do it because it's covered in buds right now. And it's one of my favorites that I have out here, but it would really benefit the plant. <clears throat> I'm probably not going to do it. <laughs> I'll wait until the winter time. The garage is heated. It should be gr actively growing and it'll be fine to do it then. Needle palms doing their thing. Needle palming. Not much to say there. They grow like snails. So, so very rarely are there updates to give with those. Sable palm down here, it's the sable miner. Down here in this corner, I planted up a Tahitian flame hedicium that was just a pathetic little rhizome, I mean, if you could even call it that. It was basically a root, and it has started to push up some new growth, so that's good. This spot stays pretty warm during the winter. We've given that a good mulch. Hopefully get a lot more growth ahead of it next year. You can't even see it down there. But next year, I think it'll be pretty cool, assuming it survives the winter, and it's still here next year. The queen palm's down here looking beautiful these got a prune they were starting to have their oldest foliage start to brown out so i went ahead and i cut it out which allowed a lot more light to come in which wasn't really great for the bromeliad planter down here but oh well we can just have 10 to 12 foot long brown palm fronds hanging from up there so those have been trimmed up they're all pushing up new growth and looking nice the bromeliad planter like i said or hinted at it's not doing great <laughs> it's, it's getting an awful lot of light now but that's all right, we're towards the end of the year. I wasn't expecting much from it right now. Anyways, the big croton 
It's this one I've had for many, many, many years. It's just loving life. Fun, simple Croton. One of my favorites, just a Petra. Nothing special, nothing fancy, but very large, very full, and very, very colorful. The New Guinea Impatience that I underplanted this Robolini palm with, they are doing great. Lots of flowers on them. That has gotten absolutely massive. I actually should probably give that a cutback because it is shading everything that's down below it, and the things that are down below it are things that I care about way more than I care about the, the New Guinea Impatience. Yeah, big time. I'm just now noticing that. Like, there's a pomegranate down here. I do have a larger Tahitian flame Hedichium. If you're wondering what the larger ones look like, that's in here. So I need to... I'm going to have to give this a big prune. Big time. It's starting to get lanky anyway, so that's fine. I don't mind giving that a cutback. The Robolini palm is looking nice. Very lush, very full. This one had some bug issues that I've been working on, and that is almost completely resolved. It's looking much better now. It had soft scale and mealybugs on it when it got brought back to me from the greenhouse. So I gave it a heavy wash and been staying on top of spraying it with the soaps and the oils, obviously keeping them as far away from the flowering things as I can. And the, the newer growth that's coming out of the middle up there looks much more sturdy and healthy than the older growth. So that's what we want to see. I've had that one for a long time. And this is probably the best it's done in a few years giant pink dragon wing begonia over here it's huge it's got to be 30 to 36 inches tall hummingbirds love it have a cordelin fraticasa down here don't know what kind it's been a fun one i like the foliage canary wing begonias and this planter love their foliage this is also planted up with some curcumas that are kind of fading out of their flowers they looked really nice though at their peak with the nice purple from the flower with the limey green on that foliage it was a nice pairing Probably do that again next year. And then I have another Cordwin Fraticasa over here that is probably a kiwi, but there are several that look like the kiwi. So maybe it's maybe it's one of those other ones. I don't know. Then a fun, sturdy, easy plant that is underplanted with all of this Catharanthus. Great plant to mix in with the Cordwin Fraticasa because those Fraticasas don't have to have a lot of irrigation. They're more tolerant of drier conditions, drier soils, that is. Humidity, not as much. They usually get covered in spider mites if things aren't nice and moist for them, humidity wise, but the soil, this one doesn't get a ton of water and the catharanthus, they seem to enjoy it. And it's a good pairing because these are both just pretty effortless plants. Put them in there, make sure they stay well watered, obviously when you're getting them going and during the heat of the summer, but otherwise they just do their thing and always look really nice. Have another seminal pink hibiscus here that's not in flower right now, but covered in buds. Pakistaki lutea down here, popping open some flowers. Looking nice. That had a big dieback last winter. I left it out and got a little bit too cold for it, so I'm happy to see it's recovered nicely from that. They can take more cold than I thought. And then this yellow hibiscus here that I don't have the name of. I like it. Also covered in buds. This one's been flowering very, very well. So this one I originally had planted or potted at the pot set back here in between this adenidia palm and the abulatin and i pulled it out i can't remember oh i pulled it out so i could repot the adenidia palm because it was like wedged in there and i didn't end up putting it back because the new container for the adenidia palm made it so that that didn't fit back there anymore and i'm okay with that i liked having it over here but it's flowering much better where i have it set right now i should find a better spot for it but it's looking nice, so I'm not worried about it. The bulletin I talked about in the last tour about how I wasn't crazy about it over here because it wasn't flowering, so what was the point? But it started to flower, so I'll go ahead and let it do its thing. It's probably still going to give it a cutback because like, it doesn't need all that growth up there. That's ridiculous. I need to trim that up and see if I can get it to bloom some more, fill out some more from the inside. I think that that is almost everything. Some more orchids over here. This one is an Oncidium Orange Delight. It's one of the dancing lady ones. You can see why. It looks like little ladies wearing their dresses, dancing around. It's a fun Oncidium. And then one of my favorite Phalaenopsis over here. This is a Violacea. has awesome purple flowers on it. This orchid has been in bloom for me for, I want to say, about a year. This is a type where it puts out a long green stem. And as long as humidity stays up for it, and it doesn't have to stay that humid, but just don't want it to let it go bone dry. They'll keep putting out flowers. As long as it stays green, they'll keep shooting out flowers. There were spells where it only had one flower on it at a time, and there are spells like right now where it has a whole bunch. Very, very fragrant. It smells nice, big, glossy foliage. I really like that one. I also have a, 
a, I think this is a Lele, an Elsie, a Lelio Catlia. I think it's just a Catlia. I could be wrong. Maybe it is. It's Wai'anae Leopard Chinwa. It has really fun flowers on it. That one's about to get repotted and mounted onto something. And then this succulent planter in the middle of the table. It's got planted up earlier in the year, drilled a hole in that container, threw some succulents in there. Haven't seen much out of them because this doesn't get much light. It's underneath an umbrella. But it looks pretty cool. Succulents have been good enough. Haven't gotten the growth out of them that you would expect if they were getting more light, but they're not getting much light. So this is pretty much what I thought they would do. Okay, I think that's everything. Again, if you wanted to know more about what's going on on this side of the patio, that's all in last week's video or the video prior to this one that was linked down below and at the end of the video. The gardenias down there, some heliconia starts. Talked about all of this last week. I'm fairly certain of that. Overall, it was a great month in the garden. Got a lot of growth out of everything. I did have to up my fertilizing game. I should have mentioned that when I talked about how I've been fertilizing about every other day or whenever I need to hand water. That's not something I do all summer long. And also it's only at a quarter strength. Otherwise I would not do that because it would damage the plants. That was just because I talked about how in June and July there just wasn't the right weather to get the plants going. So for August, I was like, let's just go pedal to the metal and fertilize the crap out of everything and try and get them caught up. And I would say that I, that definitely happened. Things really filled out. Fertilizing makes a huge, huge, huge difference to push things on and get them moving. Those look so pretty from down here. Yeah, like I said, it was a good month. August was nice. September is going to be even better because things are peeking out at this point. There's going to be a new show of flowers coming out of some of the other plants that gingers are start doing their thing. I've really been enjoying the view of the garden from inside the pool. That's something I try and think about when I'm planting is how things will look from in the pool and through the windows of the house. Any various spot where people would tend to sit and relax or spend their time. That's where I like to make sure that from all different directions things are looking nice. Thanks for hanging out. This is probably another long one so appreciate it. Everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody, what's going on in your gardens. Hopefully having a nice time outside. It's that time of year where the weather is starting to be much more pleasant. Makes it much more enjoyable to be outside and hang out with the plants, the fresh air, and just all the fun outdoor activities. Of course, as always, and most importantly everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.